Good morning, everyone. Today is Saturday, the 14th of February, 2015. I'm Anna Coyman. A Fox News alert. ISIS dangerously close to the United States troops in Iraq. Fighters attacking an Iraqi base. More than 300 of our Marines are stationed there, and they're taking over a town just miles away. The developing details in moments. And I shot them because they wouldn't talk to me. That's a verbatim quote that came out during chilling testimony in the American sniper trial. It may have just revealed the motive for the murder of American hero Chris Kyle. We'll have more coming up. And then caught on camera, a truck burst into a ball of fire. Oh, oh. What we just learned went wrong in that video. We'll explain. Happy Valentine's Day. Fox and Friends Hour 2 starts right now. This is Buddy Velastro, the Cake Boss, and you're watching Fox and Friends, the News Boss. Thank you, Buddy. Oh, yeah. Happy Valentine's Day. And we, you know, we thought ahead with the help of Teleflora. I didn't, though. Look, I didn't wear any red. I, I thought you gentlemen did that for oh. me. Well, we did. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, well that's for, I was going to put it in here. Because uh. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> wear any red today. Is that okay? Very attractive. Do you get to pitch people who don't? Yeah, how about this? Happy Valentine's Day. Happy, Happy Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day to you, Why, thank you. Yeah. Ooh, well, we, we want to get right to that Fox News alert now. Breaking overnight, ISIS attacking an Iraqi air base staffed with more than 300 U.S. Marines. The Iraqi army beating back the brutal fighters, killing them all. American Apache helicopters sent to the area near the air base. The Apaches returning safely back to the base without firing a shot. This is the Pentagon confirms ISIS has taken over the town of al-Baghdadi just five miles away. Well, our own chief intelligence correspondent Catherine Heritage has more on the attack and what military officials are now saying. Catherine? Tucker, Anna, and Clayton, while military officials here in Washington are putting the best possible face on the incursion, this is the first time a limited number of ISIS fighters have penetrated the base perimeter, and we learned that they use stolen uniforms as a disguise. Early indications are that, yes, uh, a, a, some of them did uh, detonate their, their vests, detonate themselves. Um, uh, and then they, they were followed by... Uh, roughly something on, on the order of 15 or so other fighters. Um, it does appear now that um, uh, most, if not all of them, were wearing uh, Iraqi uniforms. A former intelligence officer who was stationed at al-Assad in 2009 says the base is gigantic about the size of Boulder, Colorado, and the terrain offers no natural defenses, and the idea that 320 Marines can hold the 13-mile perimeter 24-7 and at the same time train the Iraqi army is just not credible, especially if ISIS maintains a presence in the neighboring town of al-Baghdadi. The former head of the Defense Intelligence Agency testified Friday there may be an opportunity. I would love to see an unleashing of some Iraqi force with the support of our U.S. Marines to go after and retake that little village, because that would be doable. And, um, and it would be something that the Iraqis could actually do with the support of our U.S. Marine forces that are in al-Assad. Military analysts speculate the real objective may have been to breach the base perimeter and take an American service member hostage, a high-profile bargaining chip for ISIS, now that the number of remaining Western hostages is so few. Tucker, Anna, and Clayton, back to you. All right, thanks, Catherine. Thanks a lot, Catherine. We want to bring in Pete Hegseth. Uh, there he is. Pete, it's great to see you this morning. Um, you're Good morning. the first person we go to to make sense of all of this. The, the, the most obvious concern is for these 300 Marines uh, on this base. Are they safe? Well, as of right now, at this moment, it, appear, it appears that they are. But they're living in, they're, they're, they're fish in a barrel right now. As, as was mentioned in the report, Al-Assad Air Base it has no natural defenses. It sits in a wadi in a valley surrounded by high ground. Traditionally, in defending Al-Assad, there were checkpoints and outposts that overwatched it. Marines no longer maintain those. The Iraqi army says they do. We'll, we'll see how capable they are. Now, now the enemy holds al-Baghdadi, al a town just five miles down the road. Uh, what, right now, these Marines, I know how they're feeling because I felt it before. It's a bunker mentality. It's a, men it's a mentality of we don't know what's going on outside the gates. Sure, we can secure our small portion of the post, but the Iraqi army is responsible for the remainder of it. Our intelligence is thin. Our ability to go on the offensive is thin, uh, and our hands are tied behind our back. So ISIS is at the gates. The JV team is at the gates, and there's very little that these Marines can do about it right now. You're right. The JV team, Junior Varsity, that's what the president called ISIS. Though Rear Admiral John Kirby heard him uh, in that Catherine Harris report. He's downplaying this. He said, we got 
to put this in context. Let's not make too much of this. Listen to him and we'll get you to comment. We've said from the very beginning there's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be, there's going to be gives and takes here. The, 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 I don't think we should make more out of this. I'm not saying that we're dismissing the seriousness of the potential breach here um, or of the uh, uh, increased activity by ISIL, but we ought not to make more of it than needs to be made. So, Pete, you're just making too much of this. Downplay has been the name of the game from the very beginning, and it starts at the very top from the White House. Admiral Kirby's got to say what he's got to say because of where he is. This president, from naming him the JV, from downplaying the threat, from, from committing to no boots on the ground from the very beginning, has wanted to treat this as a police action. And ISIS has taken, well, full advantage of it. Even our airstrikes haven't stopped their advance. Uh, they've stopped some of the large-scale movements, but they're still capturing towns and near our own bases. And in the meantime, you've got Marines who, who are very limited in what they can do. Do. You, they called uh, they called close air support Apache helicopters to deal with it they didn't fire a shot but they were called on station that means they thought the threat was real and we really have to start think about thinking through the thought exercise of what if one of these Apache helicopters and we know Isis is targeting they actually put a guide out on how to target Apache helicopters what if one gets shot down now we've got a helicopter down in enemy terrain we've got to put boots on the ground they would be swarmed by Isis fighters we've all seen Black Hawk down in Mogadishu no one wants that no one wants to think about what that looks like, but when you fight war half in, when you have the, a threat, you create new vulnerabilities even worse than you would if you took them on, uh, took them on uh, in a frontal assault. So we're, we're, we're tiptoeing in and we're putting our people in precarious positions. So what's the danger in treating this like a police problem, like you say, like they're just violent criminals and not the savage terrorists that they are? What do you want to see from the Obama administration? Well, I want to see, I mean, we, people have repeated this, but it's so critically important. We have to name who this enemy is of radical Islam, of ISIS, what their fundamental belief is in establishing a caliphate. That's what's making it such a magnet around the world, is jihadis see the bold nature of their mission, and they're drawn and attracted to that religious mission. Until you recognize what it is as a, as a ism that needs to be defeated, uh, you won't defeat it. This is Islamism. We defeated communism and Nazism through con comprehensive strategies strategies that included a military component, but also intelligence and information, diplomacy, regional alliances. Uh, we're not doing any of that right now because we're treating this as a, as a small thing off in the corner that doesn't need to be fundamentally addressed. Until we look at Islamism and approach it head on, we're, we're never going to see the progress we want, and we're going to see the continued exportation of fighters around the world, which brings the real threat to Europe and us. Wise words from Pete Hegseth. We expect no less, and you delivered again. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Great to Pete. see you.